Hello everyone, welcome to the Opportunity Christian Fellowship online service. We're really glad you could join us today. We're going to sing a song of praise. Um, so join us in your homes or in your car, wherever you are, sing along. The joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God song rising up in me. Hallelujah! 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 Your love makes me sing. And hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, your love makes me sing and hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing and hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing. Good morning, everyone. Today we have two announcements, and we also are going to be talking about our small groups that are starting this coming week, this Sunday on July 19th. So we hope to see you all there in one of our four small groups. Pastor Dan will be talking about that right after this. Our first announcement is that you are able to give to the church and tithe. There will be a link that you can click here on this platform or also on the website under the tab that says donate. We also encourage you to continue to fill out your connection cards with your prayer requests. They go straight to Pastor Dan or Pastor Phil. So please be sure to fill those out so we know who is attending and we hope to see you there. Now I hand it over to Pastor Dan to talk about our small groups that are starting. Hello church. Small groups start this week. Sign up now, we ask. We're offering four different small groups that will start either today or sometime this week. Please sign up. You can sign up by clicking on the button on the screen right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you can go to our website, opportunitychristianfellowship.org, or to our Facebook page, Opportunity Christian Fellowship Facebook page. And go there and you can sign up that way. But listen to these four dear people, uh, Katie and Phil and Haley and Heather are going to be talking really briefly about each of our small groups that we're starting this week. So listen, enjoy, and sign up today. Hi, I would love for you to join me and others to explore the lighthearted topic of racism. No, really, would love any and all of you to explore ideas and perspectives on racism and what God wants us to do with what we discover. We're going to read and listen to different authors and pastors talk about their experiences and knowledge. I don't have any answers. I just want to put that out there right now. I'm just newly starting this search and would love others to join me in seeking how we can love more fully in Christ's perfect love. So please sign up. Hello, everyone. I am excited to start off our small groups this summer. And we're going to be having different small groups. Mine is going to be on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's going to be every week. All you have to do is just click on the link that I'll be sending early that morning. Uh, it's usually an exciting time where we just study the sermon from the previous Sunday and we just dig deep. Uh, just like the people in Acts chapter 17, 
uh, the Bereans, they would hear the gospel and the Bible says they would go back and study the scriptures to know if what Paul was preaching was really true. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing, just digging deeper and getting more insight, more revelation. It's usually a refreshing time to encourage ourselves in the Lord. So hope to um, fellowship with you and please sign up. God bless. Hello, I'm Haley and I'm very excited to talk to you about my small group that I'm going to be starting. We will be meeting on Zoom. We have yet to determine a time because we want to make sure it's good for everybody. So if you'd like to join, please let me know and you can be put into that conversation of when we want to hold it. We are going to be reading this devotional book um, called None Like Him by Jen Wilkin. And I really hope that we can all see you there. It's on Amazon for like, I think, seven fifty. dollars So if you'd like to join, let me know. See you then. Hi, this is Heather Parent, and I am going to be in Pastor Dan's exercise group. I'm very excited about that. I'm very passionate about exercise. Um, I have used exercise to heal some very significant injuries, and I, I really believe in the power of our own bodies and overcoming through exercise. I'm really excited to help motivate you guys um, during this small group, and I can't wait to see you. Turn to a time of worship, I want to start off by reading us this scripture from 1 Thessalonians 1, 2-3. We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever been asked, how do you find joy right now? Why are you not overwhelmed or stressed or feeling discouraged? And any time that I've ever been asked that question, my answer can only be Jesus. The only reason I'm not falling apart right now in a time where all of my friends or classmates or whoever else may be, it's because I have to lean back and rely on Jesus as our, our true hope and our true joy in this world. So as we sing this next song, I invite you to take all of the areas of your life that feel like the darkness is just caving in and you feel totally hopeless to open your hands and just give those and surrender those to the Lord because he is our true living hope.
Thank you, worship team, for that great worship song. Indeed, the Lord is our living hope. He's not our dead hope. He's our living hope. And because he's still alive, we can be hopeful even in dead situations. Pastor Dan's going to be ministering to us um, from a topic called Hope is Contagious. And I want to pray, but just before I pray, I want to pray um, through this scripture in Proverbs 27 verse 19. Just as water mirrors your face, so your face mirrors your heart. And this scripture has really inspired me to be a contagious Christian. And I really like to guard my heart every morning and pray. And God can put hope, peace, and joy in my heart, knowing that um, my heart reflects on my face. And I think that the least Christians can do in this time is just to smile more. So I want to lead us in a time of prayer and I want you to just begin to relax yourself, relax your mind by just smiling wherever you are. Yes, that's what the Lord requires of us in this time, just to smile and to release hope, to become contagious, to carry his sweet aroma wherever we go. So I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that your smile will always be upon us. I pray that you would infuse your peace, your joy, your life into us so that our hearts will reflect on our face your character and your nature. Like the Levites prayed in the book of Numbers, I pray that you will bless us and keep us, that you would cause your countenance to shine upon us and be gracious to us that you will grant us your favor and give us your divine peace wherever we go. God bless you. Enjoy the time of worship together. In the Dominican Republic where I grew up, it was not uncommon for the lights to go out. As a child, I remember reading in bed at night and all of a sudden the lights would go out and then my mom and dad would come out into the living room and they would light a, a candle and that light of that solitary candle would fill the room. It would fill it with light and I was drawn to it. I'd leave my bedroom and I'd come out to the living room because everywhere else in the house it was dark. The darker the night, the brighter the candle will shine. This is a life principle, you know. The more difficult life is, the more fearful life is, 
The more frustrating and hopeless life is, the more our faith in Jesus can shine. Now, these days, as we all know, are full of all kinds of opportunity to be filled with fear and anxiety, for there to be darkness. For parents of school-aged children, or they're wondering about what's going to happen this fall. For teachers, the same. There are questions that bombard us. Our job, the economy, our health. More and more people are coming down with the COVID. Now it's probably uncommon if you don't know a family or a friend that has had it or, is it, or has it right now. It's become very real to us, especially for those of us who have close family or friends that have come down with the COVID-19. So the question I want us all to consider today as we listen together is in the midst of dark times, in the midst of COVID-19, is my light shining for Jesus? The darker the night, the brighter a single candle can shine. Let's remember that. Now here's something else about those nights when the lights would go off in the Dominican Republic. That light, the light of that single candle, what it produced was contagious. You see, it drew us to the light. We would put down our books because we couldn't read them anymore. It was dark. We would put down whatever we were watching because electricity had gone off. And we would all gather together around that solitary candle or that lantern or whatever it was that mom and dad would light. And then oftentimes we would go together out to the back deck and we would look at the gazillion stars that we could see up in the sky, up in the sky because you see there were no man-made lights on because everything had gone off. And really it was a wonderful time. Now we've heard a lot these days about the COVID virus being contagious. And it is very serious and we need to treat it seriously. But the COVID is not the only thing that is contagious. So is hope, and so is faith, and so is love. So what are we spreading? Is the light that you are shining, helping, and encouraging others? Is it pointing to Jesus? When you spend time with others, what are they getting infected, if you will? What are they getting infected with? Let's go to the Word. One of the first churches that Paul planted was the church in Thessalonica. It was a prosperous town, very important city of the day. It formed a bridge between the East and the West and the Romans would use it to transport all kinds of goods and materials. In fact, they had a, a, a naval air base there in that town and the citizens of that town, they enjoyed special privileges with Rome and had a special relationship with Rome. Well, Paul arrived there, one of his first missionary trips that he went on, he arrived and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue and began preaching there. And he preached that Jesus was the king, that he was the king of the whole world, the supreme king. And of course, this brought up, up much discussion and much discourse because you see, Caesar, Roman Caesar, was the king of the world. And to, come, and to claim another supreme king, well, that was treasonous. That was dangerous. Those were difficult words that Paul was preaching. And it aroused these Thessalonians ire for many of them because they treasured their relationship with Rome and the privileges that it would bring. And so Paul had to flee for his life. And in fact, the, the, the story tells us in Acts that, a, that a, a crowd went to where they thought Paul was. And Paul had already left the town, but they gathered and they uh, attacked the host where Paul was staying. But this young church was born in just a few weeks, maybe some people think about three months perhaps that Paul was there. And in that time, this young church, many did come to faith in Jesus and many began to live for Jesus in spite of the dark, troubled times that that meant for them. And so Paul who had left soon wrote back to them. In fact, we think it's one of the very first letters of all the letters that we find in the New Testament. We think this one, from to the Thessalonians was one of Paul's first letters. And here are Paul's words to these young believers, to this young church that is going through a dark time. And I think in these words, we can find for ourselves instruction and hope and, and an idea of what we are to do today in our own situation. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 
Uh, we're going to start with verse 2, but you'll see it there on the screen, and you can follow along there if you so desire. And it says this, we always thank, Paul is writing here, he says, we always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your, and listen well here, okay, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. Faithful work. What are they known for? Faithful work, loving deeds, enduring hope. That was the light that was shining from the Thessalonians. And then later on in the chapter, in verse 8, Paul goes on to say, and now the word of the Lord is ringing out. I love that. It's ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. The, Lord, the word of the Lord is ringing out to people everywhere. Hope, love, faith ringing out. Have you ever been lost or disoriented in a mist or a, a heavy fog, perhaps as you're hiking somewhere or driving somewhere? Well, I have as an eight-year-old boy. I was hiking up with my father and some of our friends to Pico Duarte in the Dominican Republic on the Cordillera Central. And uh, we were camped right below Pico Yaque. Uh, and I had taken off. We'd, we'd been done. We hiked. We were done hiking for the day. We were, Dad was rolling, up, rolling out the tent, preparing the things for the meal. And he said, Danny, go ahead and take off and go for an exploratory hike. And, of course, with the energy that I had, uh, I bounded up this nearby peak. And I got up there. And all of a sudden, a cloud moved in, and I couldn't see a thing. And I became disoriented. I became fearful. I became lost. I didn't know where dad was. I didn't know up from down. It was just fogged in. And so I cried out. I said, dad, where are you? And dad's voice rung out. And as he called my name and he continued to call it, I focused in on that ringing voice that dad had at that moment. I think he was feeling a bit of panic himself. And as I followed his voice, I followed it right back into the campground. These Thessalonians, their voice was ringing out. Their, their voice of faith was ringing out for all the world to hear. And people were talking. People took notice. Why is it? Why did people take notice? Why? Because in the midst of a hard and difficult situation, they were, remember, they were being persecuted. They were in real danger. But in the midst of all that, their faith and loving deeds and enduring hope brightly shone or brightly rang out clearly for all to see and for all to hear. The darker the night, the brighter one small candle can be. So we who are followers of Jesus, we have a calling to, for the light of Jesus to shine when the darkness thickens. When those around us are full of fear, we can be full of faith. When those around us are full of desperation and doubt, we can be a people of hope. When those around us are looking out just for themselves, out of fear, we can give ourselves to others sacrificially, as Jesus did. Now, is the COVID-19 pandemic real? Well, absolutely it is. It is wreaking havoc in this world. Yes, it is. Are people getting very sick and some even dying? Yes, they are. Have some of us had dear friends and family members who've gotten very sick? Yes, we do. Have some lost their jobs because of it? Uh-huh, yes. And it seems like, at least, that no one has any good solutions right now for moving forward and getting back to life as normal as we knew it. That is our reality, and it can be very disturbing. But I want today to remind us all of something. We can choose to contribute to the darkness that is all around us, the fear, the anxiety, the desperation, or we who are followers of Jesus can choose to let our light shine. And the hope of Jesus shining, the hope of Jesus shining through you is very, very contagious. From just a few believers 
to well over 6 million believers in 100 years. That happened in the second century. According to Rodney Stark from the book, The Rise of Christianity, he, said, he says in this book that in large part, the reason the church just exploded and grew was because of several worldwide plagues, pandemics, if you will, that affected the world during that century. And he writes about one of them. It's called the Plague of Cyprian. It was from 249 to 262. And he writes this, a lethal pandemic that at its height caused upwards to 5,000 deaths a day in Rome. While the plague severely weakened the Roman Empire, the Christian response to it won admiration and a greater following. Dionysius, Stark writes, Bishop of Alexandria reports this, Most of our brother Christians showed unbounding love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another, heedless of danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ and with them departed this life serenely happy, for they were infected by others with the disease, drawing on themselves the sickness of their neighbors and cheerfully accepting their pains. Many in nursing and curing others transferred their death to themselves and died in their stead. This evident Christ-likeness, taking death in order to give life, stood in stark contrast to those outside the church. Dionysius, Bishop Dionysius continues, but with the heathen, everything was quite otherwise. The deserted, or excuse me, they deserted those who began to be sick and fled from their dearest friends. They shunned any participation or fellowship with death, which yet with all precautions, it was not easy for them to escape. Glenn Scribner writes this, plagues intensify the natural course of life. They intensify our own sense of mortality and frailty. They also intensify opportunities to display countercultural and counterconditional love. A solitary candle shines brightest when the darkest night is upon us. So, my dear people, in the midst of our pandemic today lies a great opportunity to let our light shine brightly, to be a people who point to Jesus, who care for others, even risking our own health, to not give in to fear, but live out our hope in Jesus. Let us let our light shine and our voice of hope ring out. Perhaps you say to me today, Pastor, I am fearful. I do tend towards hopelessness. I am hurting, and I find that my faith wavers, Pastor. What can I do? Well, here's what I say to you. All of us, all of us at times, our candle flame flickers low, and it is almost out. It's easily snuffed out, but that is why we have each other. That is why we have each other, to encourage each other to keep our eyes, help each other to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, on what we know is true. That Jesus is our Lord and our Savior and he has a hold on us. He has a hold of this world. And our eternity is, we don't live just for this world. We live for eternity and we have eternal values. And so we encourage each other. We help each other lift our eyes up and keep them on Jesus. We need each other. You need a Christian brother, a few Christian brothers or sisters in your life to encourage you when your candle wick is almost ready to be snuffed out. We've talked about small groups in our church this morning. Are you part of one? If you're not, I would encourage you. We need each other. I need you and you need me. Jesus understands this. He understands that sometimes our faith is very weak and our hope diminishes and our love is, is spread thin. And he says this in Matthew, Jesus says, Matthew talking about Jesus says, Jesus will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious and his name will be the hope of the world. 
Jesus will not crush the weakest reed or put out the flickering candle. You see, Jesus is a rock. He's a rock that cannot be moved. Come the storms of life. And we need to remember that. We need to grab a hold of that. We need to not let go of that. Jesus is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is the one that helps us be strong in moments when it seems like all around us things are shaking. Do you know Jesus? Are you standing on the rock that is Jesus? If you aren't, I invite you to do so. Even today, when the world is shaking around you, where do you go? Do you go to Jesus? Jesus invites you to build your life on him, to know him, to invite him into your heart, and to make him your God and your Lord and your Savior. I invite you to do that right now, right where you are, wherever you are listening to this and watching this. Will you do it? Will you receive Jesus into your heart? Will you make him your Lord and your Savior. Will you do that now? Now we're going to end the service today singing an affirmation of faith, a song called Raise a Hallelujah. And it's a song of faith, a song of hope, a song of affirming our love, a song of faith in Jesus Christ who has a hold of the world. One of the verses goes like this, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. So I invite you to affirm your faith in Jesus. Sing a hallelujah together. I invite you to let your light shine. I invite you to be a hope dealer, a love spreader, a faith builder in Jesus' name. Now is the time to stand united and strong in our faith and to love others as Jesus loved. Let's sing together.
Let's pray together. Lord, today is the day that you have made and we rejoice in it. Thank you that you are a rock, a rock that cannot be moved. Today, Lord Jesus, again, or maybe for the very first time, we give our lives to you and we trust you. And Jesus, may your light shine in us and through us and may it shine brightly into this world that so desperately needs to hear a word of hope, a word of faith, a word of love. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Hang around for a few minutes. We're available to pray together with you. Just click on that button, the prayer request button, and be happy to pray with you. If you're not part of a small group, sign up today. Our small groups start this week. Have a faith-filled, hope-filled, love-filled week. Let your light shine. Bye-bye.